Okay, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about molecular motors or how cells move things. So cells in the human body move things on two scales. On the large scale, they move you, they move people. So when you flex your muscle, for instance, the cells that make up your muscle work together to produce a force that allows you to move your limbs. So by taking something very small, a cell, which is something like 10 microns in diameter on average, you can move something large like a human arm or a leg. But at the fundamentally at the cellular level, molecules of protein are moving one another and those motions add up to create motion on a large scale. And we'll take a look at how this works in just a minute. Then there's a different scale, and that is intracellular motion of things. So within a typical cell, you have a lot of stuff going on. There's a cell, and there's the nucleus in the middle, and then there's a variety of reactions happening within the cell carrying out cellular functions. Within the cell, it oftentimes is important to move certain proteins or molecules from one region of the cell to another. And in one of the previous lectures, we talked about diffusion of molecules, and particularly diffusion at the nanoscale. And diffusion can happen very quickly at the nanoscale, if you remember. There's a very simple formula to calculate the diffusion time and distance for a given molecule. If you know its diffusion coefficient, and you want to know the distance that it travels, you can use this formula to predict that. Well, it turns out inside of a cell, things are a little more complicated. First of all, cells are full of other stuff, molecules and protein assemblies of different, um, with different functions and organelles like mitochondria, things that make it actually a pretty crowded place. So diffusion always is, is not always the best way to move things at the cellular level. Also, there are some things such as organelles and in particular things like mitochondria that are fairly large, that would have a fairly large diffusion coefficient. And in fact, it would be such a large diffusion coefficient that it's impractical to move it with diffusion alone. It would take too long. So cells actually use a class of molecular motors to drag these things along very much like an 18-wheeler uh, drags along a, a huge load of cargo from one city to the other. And so we're going to take a look at both of those briefly below. So the cell uses what are called motor proteins. <clears throat> and this is a, a catch-all term. There's a variety of these present in the cell. And motor proteins are just that. They are small proteins that have some sort of three-dimensional structure. And typically, the proteins require ATP for power. ATP goes in changes the shape, and then the shape chain does some work and moves the cargo load. And from this action is generated ADP. So here is one area where ATP, the energy currency of cells, comes into play and in fact makes this motion possible at the cellular level. There's three, there are three broad groups of motor proteins within the cell. First is myosin or the myosins. This is, these motor proteins are responsible for your muscle movement and they provide the bulk motion shown above and I'll show you a more detailed view of them later. Kinesins and dynians are proteins that move stuff inside the cell. These motor proteins are the 18 wheelers that exist inside your cell and transport molecules, uh, proteins, and other cargo from one side of the cell to the other. They are related to myosins, but they work by a different action, a different mode of action. And so they, they come in a variety of, of, uh, of uh, conformations. There's over 40 different types of kinesins, and they all have slightly different functions. And this area, in particular how this class of molecules moves cargo within the cell is still under active investigation. It's not exactly clear what the, what the pr principles of motion are. And just a quick note here, 
the dynians, uh, as, a composed to the kine as opposed to the kinesins, are responsible for moving cargo in the opposite direction. And I'll show you how that's important and why that's important in just a second. Okay, so let's take a look at the myosins real quick. Um, this is just a very brief ov overview. In the, in the class notes, there's a link to a much more comprehensive YouTube video that does a much better job of providing detail. But I want to give you a general overview of what you're going to see there. So if you take uh, muscle tissue in a human body, so here's your tendons on either side connecting the muscle to the bone, and here's your muscle being flexed. If you zoom in to the muscle very far, you'll eventually get to what are called muscle fibers. And these are the, these are the fundamental cells within the muscle. And within muscle fibers is a functional unit called a sarcomere. So there are many, many sarcomeres crammed inside of a single muscle fiber. So a muscle fiber is cylindrical in shape. And within that cylindrical shape, there's, there's many, many, many muscle fibers crammed inside. And each fiber contains lots and lots of sarcomeres linked in series, like this. Right? The sarcomere is where all the action happens. The sarcomere is where the actual contraction takes place. And this is actually a fairly detailed and complicated process. And the video, again, covers that detail, but I'm going to go over it very briefly here. So if you zoom within the sarcomere, what you'll see are a series of protein structures. And we talked about in one of the previous videos how proteins are the thing, the actual workhorse of the cells. And here is one example. These proteins are made from the amino acids, and they were coded for from DNA, just like uh, all the other proteins in, in the body. The, these proteins in red, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the proteins in red are called actin, actin filaments. Filaments. The proteins in red are called actin filaments, and the protein in blue is called myosin. And so th these are the myosin molecules. And what the myosin molecules actually look like are little golf clubs, like nine irons, uh, hanging off the end of these long filaments. So the horizontal sections here are called myosin filaments, or just simply filaments, um, or even tails. And then the golf club part here is called the myosin head. So these, these lumps here. Now these lumps touch and make contact with the actin filaments. And basically what they do to do contraction is they rock back and forth. So they, they basically have a ratcheting motion where the myosin head will first make contact and then it will, it will cock back at a certain angle and pull along the the actin filament. So for contraction, what happens is using again ATP and converting it to ADP, um, the myosin filaments are essentially ratcheting along the actin filaments, pulling themselves along. So by simply changing their angle like this, the myosin heads have pulled themselves along the actin filaments. So in this one, the myosin heads are vertical and they're touching the actin. And then for contraction, what happens is they essentially cock at an angle and by, uh, by, moving, by moving that molecular motion, they pull the actin filaments, the two red sections, much closer together. So this distance, the distance between the end of the actin filaments, is much closer than this distance. So this is contraction. And so when you contract your muscle, you're essentially making billions and billions of myosin heads angle and ratchet along the, um, ratchet along the actin filaments and pull the sarcomere to a shorter and shorter length. So as contraction happens, the sarcomere becomes shorter and shorter and squeezes together. And when you relax, the opposite happens and your muscle goes back to its original shape. So myosins move along actin filaments 
and they do so by moving at an angle, releasing, moving at an angle, and by this mechanism they pull along further and further. This is muscle contraction. Now if we take a look at the kinesin, it behaves differently. So kinesin and dynein, um, again, are basically transport molecules that haul things along inside the cell. So they're used for things like moving around organelles, moving around large molecules that diffusion can't move quickly enough. They're even responsible for helping move chromosomes when your cell divides and you have to literally, and the cell literally pulls copies of the DNA into the daughter cells. They're also responsible for the assembly of cilia and flagella on the surface of cells. So before we talk about these, we need to think about what cells look like on the inside first to understand how these motors actually work. So this is a picture of a, a zeppelin, a, a dirigible, uh, being constructed, a hot air balloon. And what you'll notice is that it has this thin outer skin on it and a very, very intricate, extensive metallic framework on the inside. This framework is very similar to how cells are constructed. This image over here is an, a fluorescently stained cell. It's actually a bone cancer cell, but it's been stained to highlight the framework within the cell. All of these green markings are what is known as microtubules. And microtubules are very much like scaffolding within the cell. They're, they are molecular scale or na nanometer scale uh, tubes that crisscross the cell and provide structure and give it structure and support. And these microtubules, again, very much like scaffolding or framework, provide the highways that the kinesin motors actually walk along. So this, if I zoom in, microtubule, if this is a microtubule, again, which is basically just an assembly of protein molecules, and it's a tube-like structure, a microtubule provides a highway for these molecular motors. And so a kinesin molecule essentially looks something like this, and it has two feet. And it also has an attachment up here. So this is my cargo. This is, again, uh, an organelle or a large molecule. It can even be a, a, a plastic bead. And this is actually a technique that researchers use to study molecular motion. They'll attach a nanometer size bead to these molecules and watch them move through the cells. But within the cell normally functioning the way it does, it might be something, again, like an organelle. The cargo is attached to the kinesin, and the interesting part happens down here. This is a tether, this is a tether so it's a short length of protein that attaches the motor part, which is down here, to the cargo part. And the motor part, the kinesin molecules down here, literally walk along they literally walk along one after the other along the tubule. And so as the using ATP, using ATP, the feet walk past one another. So it consumes ATP molecules and the feet literally go one over the other as they migrate down the microtubule. And so you'll notice that this is a unidirectional motion the cargo is being hauled from the left to the right. If the cell wants to transport something the other way, it uses dynein to haul it backwards, <clears throat> which is a similar class of molecules and operates under similar principles. So this is how the cell transport things intracellularly that are too large for diffusion to handle. And there's an excellent video in the Moodle pages showing this molecular mechanism as well.